guidance to become good. Because today, I would say 10 years after I started and found the right to play, the world is not in a better place. The world is actually in a worse place because there's more extreme groups recruiting young boys and girls to do bad. There are more role models today being suicide bombers than there were 10, 12 years ago. There are more children being recruited as child soldiers today. There are more, there, I mean, there are so many dynamics. There's less girls in some places being able to go to school because of cultural insensitivities or the, the respect of women in their society. And how can we break this cycle? I will tell you a quick story from my last trip I had just this summer from Pakistan. And you can imagine I'm going to Mansera and, and Mardan and driving through Abbottabad. And maybe you all know uh, Abbottabad of this, this scenario there. I mean, I'm in the middle of very, in an area of very conservative religious um, fundamentalism. And I go into this school, a government school, run by the government for girls. And there's about 450 girls in the school. And I'm coming in as a white man, speed skater from Norway, okay? <laughs> and now they're calling me. So <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing here? Uh, I think this, I don't know if this somebody needs to answer that. I'm not. <laughs> That I'm coming in there, and you know, they are coming, these girls are coming running towards me, dancing, singing, and playing. And I was like, how is this possible? First of all, I'm a white guy, I'm not even necessarily allowed to come into this protected area where girls are educated. Two years ago, they weren't allowed to play. They're certainly not allowed to dance. And now they're dancing, they're playing, and they have the best leadership skills I've seen of any type of 12, 13, and 14 year old girls I've seen in the world. Best. And I say, they're coming, they're running up to me and they're questioning me about all our games and why have you picked that game and what are you doing this for? And all of a sudden, and I'm just, you know, uh, what? <laughs> questioning me? <laughs> Authority. And they said, they said, yes. And I was this headmaster of the school. I said, you know, how is it to kind of deal with these girls now? They're all so dynamic and they're so active and they're so... They're telling you literally what they want to learn <laughs> and what is this. And they're, they're, they're the, the headmaster looking at me and they're looking at all those female teachers. There's only females in this room, okay? Women. And they're saying, we have now the best scores in, our, in the school, in the society. We have very happy parents because the children, the girls that run to school now, we have a much better way to teach the girls everything in life, not only about math and science, but their scores is better in math and science and languages, but their, their life is better. And they said, we, have, we are forming new leaders in this country, and we need to do that now. We need to form leaders in our girls to take over what's happening to our country. That's what I was telling them. And I said, we cannot not do this anymore. We had to build it from the grassroots and we had to build it with human kind, kindness. We had to do it with the respect of other people, with the ability to give them the opportunity to grow their talents. And that's what Right to Play is about. That's when we're using the power, this exceptional, powerful tool of play in a child's life. And then building lessons around all the games they're playing so they can learn from it. So we talk about it. So we have the opportunity. It's a very new dynamic way to talk to a child. is to play with a child.